Hello, YouTube. Welcome, everybody. Every day uh, for the next week, as there's new information that's coming out about uh, PoE 3.3, the Incursion League, we're going to be looking at uh, different aspects of the reveal, different basically just things to get hype about, things to get excited about. Today, we're going to look at some of the uniques that have already been uh, released or are being in the midst of being previewed right now. So we're going to look at a couple of these uh, here today just really quickly. So the first one is uh, a Peps Slumber. Uh, it gives it is an ancient spirit shield. It gives you seven percent increased spell damage, adds twenty two to thirty five chaos damage, ninety six maximum energy shield, twenty five percent chance to be poisoned, and then gives you three percent to all maximum resistances while you are poisoned. You also gain the benefit of fifty uh, energy shield regenerated per second per poison on you, up to two hundred and fifty per second poisons on you expire 50% slower. So this could be some sort of way of uh, self-inflicting poison and, and uh, essentially a trigger for self-inflicting poison builds. So uh, similar to like self-inflicted bleed builds using like uh, the red trail, things like that. So it's pretty interesting and it comes in the shield slot. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, next is the Fate of the Vol. It is a uh, one-handed sword gives you uh, an implicit mod of 400 uh, to accuracy rating. It's a physical weapon. Uh, it's attack speed 1.45. Uh, we don't know what the rules are on that yet, how, how that'll scale. Uh, it gives you increased physical damage, increased attack speed, and then it gives you this really awesome, fun, cool, unique, unique effect. 100% of physical damage from hits with this weapon is converted to a random element. Hits with this weapon always inflict element, elemental ailments. And hits with this weapon deal 50% increased damage to ignited enemies. Hits with this weapon deal 52% increased damage to frozen enemies. And hits with this weapon deal 46% increased damage to shocked enemies. Now, right off the bat, if you're wondering, hey, why is it that there uh, is a scaling, like there's a different scaling in the ailments and the damage that it's going to do? Probably because uh, if you look at these, each of these different ailments does different things, right? So ignite does DOT, it does a damage over time effect. So you probably want to um, scale that such that the burst on the front end is a little bit higher uh, for uh, the damage that gets dealt because it's going to deal damage over a longer period of time. So if you're just going for a burst build, you need to up the damage um, from uh, uh, from actually hitting that enemy. Then hits with this weapon deal 52% increased damage to frozen enemies. <clears throat> we all know that cold uh, by far is the um, lowest scaling flat damage, but because of the way how shatter works, that shatter and fro um, freezing people is both an offensive ability to be able to shatter uh, minions, but then it also acts as a defensive buffer because stuff that's frozen can't attack you, um, whereas ignite just does damage over time. So it's, you know, gets tiered down in terms of its damage uh, on the front end from uh, Ignite. Ignite gets the highest amount of damage overall, uh, but that's, again, because it comes with the least amount of utility buffs. And then hits with this weapon to deal 40% increased damage uh, to shocked enemies. We already know that once an enemy is shocked, you're getting bonuses to how you're hitting it and how much damage it's going to receive. So that kind of makes sense that just to not make shock automatically the best way to build this weapon, that it's going to be slightly lower uh, on, the, uh, on the roll scale. So that's the fate of the Vol Gemstone Sword. Then we've got the Mark of the Spirit Drinker. It's a Crusader helmet. It gives you armor and energy shield. It gives you uh, flat uh, uh, maximum life. Your energy shield starts at zero. You cannot gain energy shield. And then you have flat life regeneration for every <coughs> 500 maximum energy shield that you have. So it's interesting. If you're stacking ES, you're going to get life regen. So I'm not exactly sure what this is going to do. I'm sure some of you are going to come up with some really awesome builds. Um, maybe we're looking at like some uh, witch builds or some um, some builds that really invest in that top side, uh, energy shield side. Uh, maybe some Templars that will now be able to go, you know, life regen, both with energy shield. I'm thinking low life, um, righteous fire, <coughs> energy shield dependent uh, guardians maybe, that they'll get extra additional life regen. I don't know. Um, you obviously wouldn't want to go low life if you're depending on life regen. Um, you definitely wouldn't want to go Zealot's Oath <laughs> since you cannot gain energy shield. But we'll see. We'll see ultimately uh, what exactly this this unique uh, comes in use for. It, it could be interesting. It's definitely a unique unique. So, uh, Story of the Vol. This is the uh, uh, um, one-handed alternative to your uh, Fate of the Vol. 
Uh, so this gives you uh, a flat accuracy rating, gives you increased uh, physical damage, increased attack, life gain on hit or on kill. Sorry, uh, it's a lower level requirement than the uh, um, fate of the vault. It gives you 50% of the physical damage from hits with this weapon being converted to a random element, and then hits with this weapon always inflict elemental ailments. So, again, you're always going to be either shocking, freezing, or igniting stuff. The question. So now you you don't have to essentially use any passive points or uh, even use any ascendancy points to try and make your uh, elemental ailments actually hit. Like you're always going to inflict those status ailments. The question is now scaling the damage on those things and whether or not that's worth it. So, uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether or not that's a, a decent leveling weapon. String of Servitude, Heavy Belt. This is going to give you uh, a flat 18% increased maximum life and then implicit modifier magnitudes are tripled. So this could be really, really interesting, right? So like if you roll potentially, you know, plus one endurance charges or plus one maximum endurance charges, does this mean that that would give you plus three maximum endurance charges or frenzy charges, et cetera, whatever it is that you're going to roll on that? So uh, it's not going to give you, you know, it's kind of the opposite <coughs> of what we were seeing with all of the belts um, that were coming out of Abyss League where everything's got a socket for an Abyss Jewel and you just want to stack flat damage and crush everything. Um, this could be really, really interesting, especially for defensive builds uh, that want to stack um, those implicits that get corrupted. So we'll see exactly what the String of Servitude, uh, what sort of builds come out of that. Then we've got Xerfi's Heart. It's a paw amulet. Requires level 70. It gives you increased mana regeneration rate. It also adds 51 to 59 chaos damage. Items and gems have 50% increased attribute requirement. Chaos damage can ignite, chill, and shock, and you gain Soul Eater for 10 seconds when you use a Vol skill. Now, the big change here <coughs> that we really need to pay attention to is that all skills now, basically, um, are going to stack with their Vol skills. Like, you're not going to have... Um, uh, the double requirement to run, you know, two different sockets uh, or socket setups, one for your Vol skill and then one for your regular skill. Like Vol, essentially your Vol skills are now going to be your regular actives um, and they're going to overlap. So it's going to be really, really interesting how attractive Vol skills are uh, in the new league and how many people are actually running them uh, and, and what sort of setups we can come up with the, the Vol skills. It'll be really interesting to see uh, that break down and exactly how OP um just vol skills in general are going to be. But Xerfi's Heart, <clears throat> definitely something that'll be right up the alley of this league. This could be this could be like a league-specific um, meta-defining uh, amulet. It could also not be, right? It could just be that everybody goes, eh, meh, who cares? But it could be really, really incredible for, um, for any chaos sorts of, of builds. And we're going to see a lot, I think, uh, of different chaos builds and a lot of trapper builds um, coming out because of all of the, the buffs and changes to trappers and mines so it should be interesting to see uh, exactly what those things look like as you've got soul eater running around you know using vol uh, fire trap etc or vol bear trap or whatever um, so should be should be a good time looking forward to it getting excited for uh, the incursion league uh, the incursion league which now we are at 21 days six hours 40 minutes and 10 seconds. So get excited, get hype. Incursion is right around the corner and we're just going to keep coming out with videos uh, to get you excited as more information about Incursion comes out.